The range of pandemic aid programs currently helping millions of Americans are set to expire at the end of 2020. So what do you need to know to plan for your future? Joining me now is Bloomberg News' U.S. economy reporter Reed Pickert, live in New York. Reed, it's great to have you on the show. Uh, take us through which programs are ending. Yes, of course. Thank you so much for having me. So. Basically, we have a range of programs that are expiring at the end of the year, and they range from everything from two federal unemployment insurance programs to a freeze on student loans to a moratorium on evictions uh, to even some Federal Reserve programs. And, and basically, what, what we're seeing and what we're worried about is that you're going to get to the end of the year, and unless Congress acts, millions of people are going to lose these lifelines that they've had um, throughout the pandemic that has helped them stay afloat. Yeah, and, and these are our lifelines. As, as you and your colleague found in, in the story, you reported on, on several individuals around the United States who were relying on, on these payments to essentially keep them in their homes, keep them from losing their homes to banks or, or, or getting kicked out uh, for not paying rent. Take us through what you found. Yeah, so, so basically the CARES Act back in March, which was the, um, the huge bipartisan fiscal relief package that both sides of the aisle passed um, to, uh, to kind of tackle the economic impacts of this pandemic, it did a lot of things. It not only targeted aid to small businesses um, and, and big corporations, but it, it also created these two federal unemployment insurance programs. And one is called Pandemic Unemployment Assistance, otherwise known as PUA. And it was very unique in the way that it provided jobless benefits to those who aren't typically eligible. So think of your self-employed workers, think of your gig workers, your Uber drivers. Um, and that has supported millions of people during a time where, you know, a lot of people aren't taking Ubers. A lot of people aren't doing um, th these kind of jobs don't exist and have business in the way that they you know, normally do. So uh, for instance, I chatted with someone who his primary job is to help organize and plan um, corporate parties and charity events and these large scale events where a lot of people are there. And he said that you know, as soon as COVID hit, within a couple weeks, just the cancellation emails came piling in. And these, these PUA payments have really been keeping him afloat. Um, and then the other program that's set to expire is called PEUC. And it's very similar to what we typically see during recessions and something that we saw in the Great Recession, um, which is that it's just an extension of regular state unemployment benefits. And in this case, it extended those benefits by up to 13 additional weeks. But the problem with both of these things, obviously, is that right now, they're, unless Congress acts, they're scheduled to expire at the end of the year, which means that the last eligible week that people can get unemployment insurance for is the second to last week of December, or the week ended December 26th. But at the same time, the pandemic's not over, and right. we have, you know, 10 million less jobs than we had in February. And that expiration is also coinciding with the end of an eviction moratorium, national eviction moratorium that's been in place. So some of these people who haven't been able to pay their bills in full for months now also have to think about the fact that they are jobless, have months of rent that they haven't paid in full that they'll be facing at the start of the year and are worried about what apartment or home is going to accept them when they have no income to, to show for it. So, so when, at what point do we start to hear from, from lawmakers about how they can actually solve this? Because we're, we're in a sticky situation as a country right now. We have a president who has not accepted the results of, of losing the election. We have a president-elect who's not set to take office until the second half of January. And between those two period, between now and then, um, a lot of these expire. Yeah, honestly, it's it's pretty bleak. So lawmakers have been at a standstill for months now, and there was this other part of unemployment insurance that was an extra six hundred dollars a week um, that expired in late July. And as the deadline came up and came closer and closer, Republicans and Democrats agreed that more money was needed, but they disagreed on how much money extra extra money people needed. But that deadline came, went, and now we're months past then, 
and we're kind of hurtling towards these deadlines and you're still seeing, you know, despite lawmakers saying on both sides that we need extra support, they they haven't still they still haven't come to an agreement. Um, and Biden, uh, pre uh, President elect Biden actually you know, talked about this this emphasis on we need stimulus action now. And by now he meant during this, you know, this lean duck period. Um, and so it, it is a very complex situation and one um, that we don't really know how it's going to work out. There's there's some thought that perhaps some um, aid could be wrapped into um, a, a spending bill that's needed to pass before the end of the year to avert a, another federal government shutdown. Um, but right now, the outlook is is um, unclear. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty bleak, and it's certainly uncertain. One thing that we know, Reed, is that the stimulus payments that Americans got earlier this year really helped uh, – power through an economy and really helped with some sort of semblance of a recovery. I'm wondering what the expiration of these program means for the economy at large. Obviously, it's just it's just terrible for so many individuals, including those who you spoke to in your reporting. But what is the macroeconomic picture that it paints? So the macroeconomic picture. So so right now, kind of what we're looking at is is we have an economy that has recovered much faster than, frankly, a lot of people expected. And but that doesn't mean that we don't have a long way to go. And on on the aggregate, on the aggregate, um, consumer finances actually look really, really good. So when you take away this unemployment insurance, when you take away these kind of protections that people have, it may not have this enormous macroeconomic impact. It may certainly weigh on the recovery and certainly add an additional downside risk, especially when you're seeing um, this most recent COVID-19 flare up and you're seeing states and localities put new business restrictions in. Um, but I think at least when I was talking to economists about this, their emphasis was really on that microeconomic picture mm -hmm. and how at a time like this, it, it does matter that 12 million people are expected to lose these benefits at year end. Yeah, it certainly does matter. Bloomberg News' U.S. economy reporter Reed Pickert joining us live from New York. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.